Hello, it's Scott Manley here. I occasionally talk about spacecraft falling back to Earth, satellites that burn up in the atmosphere and get captured on somebody's you know, smartphone. But uh, we're actually expecting a very old satellite to fall back, and this one is very different. You see, 50 years ago, March 31st, 1972, the Soviet Union launch a space mission. And we believe that this is a copy of Venera 8. This was another spacecraft that was supposed to go to Venus, launched on a Molnir rocket. It was common at this time to build multiple copies of spacecraft to increase the chances of success. And so, like Venera 8, this was supposed to go to Venus, but something went wrong and it ended up stuck in Earth orbit. Now, the Soviets would quickly designate the spacecraft Cosmos 482. And 50 years later, one of the things from that launch is still in orbit, but not for very much longer. We think this spacecraft is going to fall to Earth in the coming days or weeks. Now, over the years, there's been some discussion, speculation, uh, uh, you know, uh, debating as to the identity, the size, the nature of this object. And some people claim that it's like the cruise stage. Some people think it's the lander. Some people think it's just debris. But uh, there's one guy that wrote the, an article, uh, Mark's Dutch satellite observer, uh, Marco Longbrook. He's somebody that has a clue and he thinks that it's only the descent module and this is partly based on looking at the light curves that show that it doesn't ch change much uh, and the ballistic coefficient. This is something that is designed to go through atmospheres with relatively low drag. And so the interesting part about that is this spacecraft is very likely to survive its re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. After all, it was designed to handle re-entry through Venus's atmosphere. And most spacecraft, most satellites that are deorbiting, they don't do that. They burn up high in the atmosphere and put on a pretty light show rather than drop, dropping big chunks of spacecraft onto the ground. Big chunks of Soviet era spacecraft. So yeah, Cosmos 482 blasted off from Baikonur four days after uh, Venera 8, right? They probably had basically the identical, the same ship design, but unlike its sister ship, Cosmos 482 got stuck in this really eccentric orbit. Uh, so this orbit was like 200 kilometers by 9,800 kilometers, a 52 degree inclination. And the reason for this is the stage that was supposed to inject it into the departure orbit stopped early. Either it had a failure in its engines or its uh, timing system shut down early. We're not really clear, but what happened was spacecraft is stuck in this orbit. Now, Western military space tracking networks, they are, of course, watching all these launches. They find a number of items from this launch. There's like, another stage or two, two stages in these eccentric orbits. There's some stages in low Earth orbit. And over time, these things have dis disappeared. But importantly, about 90 days after the initial launch, the uh, spacecraft splits into two. And this is consistent with a Venus-bound spacecraft you know, separating its descent stage from the cruise stage in anticipation of finally landing on Venus. And the interesting thing about this is, I guess that they kick themselves apart at about, you know, maybe 10 meters per second or less, not a huge amount of speed, but because it's in this highly eccentric orbit, that changes the orbit sufficiently that one part burns up in 1981, right? So that lasts less than 10 years, whereas another part, which is about to come down, that's lasted more than 50 years. So um, that's why, you know, that's the part that we've been following. All the other parts have gone. This is the last part from this particular launch. And that eccentric orbit, like, as it comes down close to the Earth, it's had a little bit of drag all the time. And what happens is the apogee gets lower and lower faster than the perigee. The perigee has been pretty much constant the whole time. And as of like tonight, it's in a 380 by 154 kilometer orbit. So it's come down from like 10,000 to 300 and it's dropping by about 10 kilometers per day. So it's going to come down, it's eventually going to get a near circularized orbit and it's going to fall somewhere over the Earth. It'll plow into the atmosphere. If it's able to handle re-entry, it should come through the hypersonic phase and maybe decelerate to as slow as 70 meters per second or about 160 miles per hour. If we assume it's built the same as Venera 8, it would be designed with a parachute 
But that's not likely to make a difference because firstly, that parachute is designed for Venus's much thicker, denser atmosphere. And also, that parachute almost certainly requires battery power to operate, and that will be in short supply after 50 years in space. So this spacecraft is going to slow down, survive entry, and then fall through the atmosphere like a rock and smash into the ground, probably breaking apart like an egg, a giant 500 kilogram Soviet space egg. Now, we don't know exactly where it will come, come down because we don't know when it will come down and it's moving across the Earth at almost eight kilometers per second. So if you can't, don't know when, you definitely don't know where. Odds are it will be somewhere over the ocean because most of the Earth is ocean. But if it comes down on land, that could be especially interesting. It will smash into the ground and you break apart. It will probably deliver a bunch of ancient Soviet space technology to Earth. And there will no doubt be souvenirs and stuff to collect. It will be really cool to see some of this stuff perhaps uh, looked at by museums or at the worst sold on eBay. The problem is that we can't really time the, the descent exactly because uh, Earth's atmosphere is constantly changing. As the solar activity goes up and down on a short time scale, the upper atmosphere can balloon out very quickly and then sink down over time. Now, we do know that it has to land somewhere between 50 degrees north and 50 degrees, 2 degrees south because that is the orbital inclination. That is the only place that it can access. But that still covers a huge part of the planet Earth. Now, the sister spacecraft, Venera 8, that was uh, has the distinction of being the second spacecraft to land on Venus. And by the way, while it was officially called Venera 8, there were actually 16 prior probes that were sent to Venus, but only seven of which were successful. Most of them were trapped in low Earth orbit or worse. And Cosmos 482, it was presumably going to be called Venera 9 if it hadn't failed and got stuck in orbit. So yeah, Venera 8, it uh, flew, to, it launched on 27th of March and it got to Venus uh, 22nd of July, 1972. It hit the atmosphere, decelerated and then descended under parachute taking 55 minutes or so to reach the surface. During this time, it was doing science all the way down. For example, it measured light levels and it showed that the light levels, uh, well, the way the light levels worked, it showed that there was a definitive cloud layer that disappeared after a certain altitude. And they also showed that the light levels on the surface of the planet were sufficient that they could actually take images using cameras. It had a gamma ray spectrometer on board, which measured the various radioactive elements and isotopes in the surface of the planet, you know, potassium, uranium, thorium. And then using their various ratios, geologists could determine that the surface of Venus was probably consistent with alkaline volcanic basalts that we find on Earth. But Venera 9, again, is going to have the same technology on board, very likely. It doesn't going to have anything, it's not going to have anything dangerous on it. It might have some pyrotechnics that are used to deploy like parachutes and, and stuff like that. But uh, it's also, by the way, probably going to have a fairly robust pressure shell around it because it has to survive 80 atmospheres of pressure. And so if it does fall into the ocean, there's a non-zero chance that this thing might actually land and maybe float. I'm not sure about that because it's a 500 kilogram object. It just might be too compact uh, and too dense. It might just sink. If it did sink, it could sink pretty deep. But then again, it is going to have to survive landing at you know 160 miles an hour. But yeah, over the next few days, we'll be watching this. If anything interesting happens, uh, you know, if we get any cool photos, that would be awesome. If not, uh, well, that'll just be another you know relic of the Soviet era getting lost. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.